Hi, I'm Veronica and welcome to the Bookum channel. This is our 17th session today and we're going to be taking a ride on the wild side. So stay tuned, fasten your seat belts and cheers. It's time for Bookum. Hi, today I just wanted to give you an update as to what's going on in my writing world and uh, uh, specifically with uh, my American Almost Royal Cousin series. This is the first book in the series, The Crown for Castlewood Manor, and uh, it's coming up on uh, three years in February, and wow, what a journey it's been. I mean, this book certainly changed my life, and uh, my character Gemma's life has changed dramatically, too, in the past five books. So anyway, it's... Uh, uh, been a lot of fun and um, I'm very excited. I have done something uh, with the Crown for Castlewood Manor that I have not done with any of my books to date and that is to purchase a uh, Kirkus review. Uh, the Kirkus uh, organization uh, carries a lot of weight in our literary world and um, I'm hoping to get uh, some good results from that. Um, I should be, it's being reviewed right now and I should be getting my uh, book review uh, from them by the end of October. So it's gonna be trick or treat for me and uh, we'll see what happens <laughs> with that, but hopefully good news. I'm really excited to uh, do some new, uh, start some new marketing campaigns toward the end of the year and the first of next year with the series and I think having a Kirkus review under my belt, if you <laughs> if you will, uh, you know, should help, uh, you know, uh, with some of the marketing efforts there too. So we'll see, uh, you know, like I said, a writer's life is never done. So there's always something to do even with uh, some of your older books. Um, one thing I am also doing with uh, The Crown is looking into some audio options. I have some friends that are going down the audiobook trail and I'm watching them and, you know, learning uh, from their experiences and what have you. So that could be uh, one of my big projects in 2021 as well. So, you know, it's a new world for me. I, I'm not uh, uh, a huge uh audiobook uh, aficionado, but I know it's, uh, you know, the new world and something that you just got to get with the program on. So uh, we'll look for that in 2021. Um, for me, I have um, also begun work on the sixth book in my series. So we have uh, Twins in the City, Playtime at Castlewood Manor. And uh, this book starts out with uh, Holiday in Bermuda and uh, which is uh, some place I'd hope to uh, vacation myself, but it doesn't look like that's going to be able to happen. And then we move into uh, London where Gemma, Kyle and the babies and Figgy are looking for a, a city home, a second home um, uh, to put down some roots in the city when they visit there. So I'm sure there's uh, some exciting things that I get on with this and uh, get the book into editing. We're going to shoot to uh, have it uh, out by Christmas. So that could be a Merry Christmas and a great way to close out 2020. So we'll see uh, see what happens. So that's kind of it with me in terms of what's going on in my writing world right now. <laughs> so always something there. But uh, anyway, thanks. So we're in the section where you definitely need your seat belts fastened, and that's because we're going to talk about uh, Bibiana Crawl's uh, latest book called Volga Black, which is uh, just uh, a nighttime uh, uh, story set in Warsaw that is just going to set you on edge. And uh, I love the description from the back cover where it says, Arthur, author Bibiana Crawl delivers a modern noir with a supernatural edge tales from the crypt meets european street party and that's pretty much uh, <laughs> a very concise uh, description it's our main character is a young woman by the name of tanya and she is going to university in War warsaw but uh she really um her mind is more set on you know doing the nighttime party life and especially at some of the uh uh, locations they have on the uh, banks of the river there in Warsaw and that's where her friends gather and that's you know it's a uh, nighttime of drinking and partying and you know we'll worry about the rent and uh, school later you know <laughs> kind of uh, mentality 
But one night she does have a you know major experience when a huge giant black car emerges from the sea and plows through the crowd on the beach and starts you know drifting around the streets of Warsaw and Tanya has no idea that her life is about to change because she wonders about the car and what's happening. Her friend Hans gives her some um, folklore insights as to you know some of the legends that are around, but um, you know Tanya doesn't quite you know I don't know whether she believes it or not, but I think she's really more interested in learning you know who the driver of this car is and what's going on and why does she keep seeing it. So you'll see um, her world as it uh, kind of evolves um, in a very short time frame in terms of. Um, uh, her going out on uh, some of the city streets and seeing the car and uh, she actually ultimately meets the driver at uh, the little restaurant where she works and um, again she gets uh, pulled in and uh, uh, is set for a supernatural experience that uh, I don't think she sees coming but one of the things I absolutely loved about uh, this story is that um, the description of Warsaw, I've never been, I uh, had the pleasure of traveling to uh, that city, but it just sounds like a beautiful European city to uh, definitely put on the travel list. And that's one thing Bibiana really does a fine job of is in terms of, you know, giving you that uh, as you're walking the streets with Tanya in her shoes, um, you know, you, you learn about the, the city and some of the uh, architecture and, you know, major sites and uh, just really, you know, you feel like you're, you're right there. And for me, especially uh, in 2020 when you can't travel, <laughs> um, I'm looking for any book that uh, invites me in so that I get a, a bird's eye view of, of the location and what have you. But it's action packed and, um, really pulls in some of the, like I said, some of the uh, Polish f folklore and um, you have some twists and as with uh, many of Bibiana's books, um, I did not see this end coming. <laughs> so I just be forewarned because, um, you know, I just uh, just shake my head. But, you know, that's a, that's a beautiful treat from uh, reading uh, Bibiana's books is, uh, you know, expect the unexpected. I should know that by now. But um, one thing I did want to uh, call your attention to, and you can't really see, but uh, in some of the notes after the story, Bibiana highlights um, some, her great grandparents here. And so uh, uh, this picture is of um, her great uh, grandmother, uh, Carolyn Anna, and her maternal grandmother, Catherine, and great Grandpa uh, John Peter and I just thought that was just something that's really special because she took this book uh, to heart and really tried to fold in some of the stories from her grandparents and uh, uh, their heritage. Uh, they emigrated from uh, Poland uh, during uh, I guess World War II and um, I'll just uh, read a little bit here. Uh, my maternal grandparents were part of an exodus from Poland when terrible things began to happen in the countryside. So one army marched from the west and another came from the north. Villages and entire cities were taken over by ruthless invaders. And, you know, I think that's what makes this story very special too is, you know, having that um, family connection and pulling in um, experiences, um, you know, from your ancestry and, and that, and it just makes uh, for a more uh, intimate uh, story, I guess, and, uh, you know, you can really pull in, um, you know, not only the, uh, the adventures of uh, Tanya and her friends there, <laughs> and uh, maybe some demons that she might meet, but uh, also get, um, you know, some, you can feel the love, I think, uh, on the pages where you know you can tell that Bibiana was putting in um, her family's uh, experiences and just some of the legends that have been passed down uh, through the generations. So to me, that was a very special part of the read too, is to go back to uh, 
uh, the back pages. But this is a perfect one. Um, I know when she put it out, she was a little concerned because of everything going on in 2020. But hey, right now, it's Halloween and uh, Halloween season, and we're in the mood for some spooky tales that are gonna set us on edge, and I can't recommend uh, Volga Black enough. It's a ride on the wild side for sure, so thanks. Hi, so for this uh, final session, I just wanted to uh, wish you all a happy Halloween. I'm in uh, full Halloween mode here. As you can see here at the Barton Abode, we have lights galore, including my uh, witchy tree there in the corner. <laughs> so uh, uh, my husband and I uh, get into it uh, uh, pretty much, and especially uh, with uh, this year in 2020, I mean, you might as well decorate the house. And so uh, we went full bore, but we're not that early. I don't think um, uh, most of the stores are actually, uh, you know, are already out of their Halloween decorations and are putting in Christmas. So, you know, what can I say? And we probably are guilty of uh, cleaning out a lot of the aisles there too. But um, one thing too, I wanted to, uh, uh, call your attention to is that beautiful uh, cape there in front of the tree. It's a black velvet cake, uh, cape with a, uh, a purple satin lining and a little lacy tiara. That's my contribution to the outfit there. But uh, for one lucky reader of Hearth Fires, if you let Bibiana or myself know that you are reading it, uh, we'll put you in the drawing. We're doing a, um, kind of a, a name drawing on uh, September 21st and uh, one lucky reader is going to get that little ensemble uh, delivered uh, with a signed copy of our book too. So we're very proud of it. Uh, it's been a fantastic week of uh, uh, book launch activities with Hearth Fires. Uh, sorry if you're getting inundated with you know tons of tweets and <laughs> Facebook posts, but uh, we're really proud of it. And Bibiana has put together just some amazing uh, book trailers or short story trailers actually for each of the stories in Hearth Fires that I think are just simply fantastic. So uh, turn up the music and give them a listen. Um, I also had them featured on my uh, website, my new website, which uh, has also been a big project the last few weeks. And again, uh, thank you to Bibiana and her uh, services too. Um, I'm very proud of uh, the veronicakleinbarton.com website. Uh, I've transitioned my blog uh, over there as well as all my book pages. You can actually go to the vault at Sherwood Hall if you want to see or purchase some of my favorite uh, little baubles that uh, have caught my eye over the past few years since I started the series. But uh, we're very proud of it and uh, appreciate any feedback that you uh, have for me uh, on that. Uh, you know, I'm always uh, looking for customer comments or, you know, colleague comments to, you know, improve whatever we can. So uh, we'll take them under advisement. But if you do get a chance, like I said, I'd appreciate if you uh, go over to veronicakleinbarton.com and, and give it a look. So with that, uh, that's kind of it for me this week. Um, thank you for tuning in and uh, you can unbuckle your seat belt right now if you like. <laughs> so um, next week, Amy Reed's on deck uh, talking all things books once again. And uh, if you have any comments or uh, questions for us, just uh, let us know down in the comment session and we'll get back to you. So with that, you have a great week. And for now, just book them. Thanks. Hi, I'm Veronica. Just book them. I'm Amy. Let's book them. Hey, this is Viviana. Just book them.